Spirit. They had the gifts of the Spirit. Like many in Corinth, but had not cultivated the fruit of the Spirit. And Paul says, once you go upward with your presentation, backwards from confirmation, that's got to be an inward transformation. He says, your mind got to be renovated. A very picturesque phrase paints the picture of an old house. You know, old houses are subject to dilapidation. Asbestos and parasites and termites can creep into an old house and bring it down to destruction. Paul says, your mind is like an old house. There are all types of adversarial asbestos and troubling termites which will seek to creep into your mind to bring your mind asunder. And so your mind has a direct correlation with your destiny. Solomon or Amenopes or whoever wrote the proverb said, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But that's problematic from an anthropological perspective because the heart cannot think. All thinking capacities are in the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pineal gland, uh, the medulla oblongata. Uh, 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 all thoughts starts here. And so what Paul is, what the Solomon is saying, as a man thinks psychologically, in his heart, chronologically, so is he anthropologically. In other words, I become what started in my mind. And one reason a lot of us won't move into word and worship and move beyond the parameters and the quagmire of contentment and complacency is because our minds are messed up. When I played football, the chili just had a chill. They say, elevate your mind, get yourself together. A lot of us need to elevate our minds because what we don't know is this. Paul says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, that's a mind thing, and bringing into captivity every thought. Are y'all with me here? He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul said, what sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do I have a Bible reading? Think on these things. He said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your heart and your See, young lady, can't no man blow your mind if you got your mind on Jesus. Isaiah said if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in. And I heard my granddaddy say, I woke up this morning with my mind stuck on Jesus. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm so glad. Out of all the stuff the enemy took from me, he could take my mind. I should have been crazy by now. I should be putting my hair on my feet and my shoes on my head. But the enemy could not have my mind. See Descartes once said, cognito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. I become the sum total of what I thought. That's why I don't like folk around me who always complain about how bad things are. I hate folk who always, every Sunday, I'll kill your spirit. How you doing, oh child? I'm, I've been constipated all week. My arthritis, I ran. Sit yourself down. Every now and then, you all say the genre of the Lord is my strength. I don't feel my best, but I know God is able. And if I hang on in here for a minute, He's going to bring me out. Is there anybody around this house know God got something better in store for you? And the best is still yet to come? Upward presentation, backwards from conformation, inward transformation. That's one more thing you got to do. 
I gotta get back to Atlanta. Once you go upwards with the presentation, backwards from your conformation, you have an inward transformation. Fourth and finally, that's got to be an outward demonstration. It's in the text. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word prove, doke mato in Greek, it means two things. Number one, in its verb transliteration. It means that we are to ascertain and to attest to determine what God's will is. That we ought to be actively determining or proving his will. And that is a part of our Christian responsibility. But I don't like the verb transliteration of doke mato, rather I like the noun form. The verb transliteration means that we are to do it. The noun transliteration means we are to become it. Let me come this way. So I am not to prove his will only, but rather I become the proof of his will. Some of y'all still ain't feeling me. I become the evidence that proves and gives credence and authenticates what his will is. to save. His will is to deliver. And we are to become proof of what his will is as an outward demonstration. I've got to close, but there's a fellow, Dr. McKissick, in California. His name is Michael Nido. He uh, is a physician by trade and attorney by training. He says that he was a former minister. He went to law school. He's now a physician. His daughter was about nine years of age. And on behalf of his daughter, he sued the Ninth District Education Department of California. Because now he's atheistic former minister, whatever kind of minister. And he says he's suing them because of a blending. Or rather, we are in violation to the laws of the land. For it is wrong in a public, publicly uh, supported place for children to say one nation under God. If there's a separation between church and state. He says further that currency that has in God we trust is also in violation if there's a separation between God and government. And right now they're back and forth, forth and back with litigation because the, the court, the state courts of California agree with him. And now it is in and out of the Supreme Court's jurisdiction because he's bringing it back to them and they don't know now how they're going to handle it. They have a temporary stay because they said he's filing on behalf of his daughter. And so since his daughter is not speaking, that, uh, that's, he's out of his rights because that's on behalf of his daughter. If he gets somebody else and children to agree with him, then we may have to agree with him. Somebody interviewed him and said, sir, why don't you believe? in God. And Nito says, I'm not going to stop until I get this one nation under God, in God we trust, out of America's collective vocabulary. They said, sir, why are you so adamant? He said, I don't believe in God. Because if that is a God, where is the proof? Well, Bethel, I don't know when the next Supreme Court case is going to be. But maybe I ought to get a busload or a plane from Atlanta. And some of you Bethelites get a plane or train or bus from Jacksonville. And we meet in that D.C. courtroom. And we go into the judge's chambers. 
and right when they're getting ready to rule on this one nation under God motif we bust in the room and say hey Mr. Nito we heard you were looking for proof that God will do what God said if you need some proof here we is we have I didn't mean to hold you. Can, can, I gotta close, but uh, before I close, can 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 y'all work with me for a minute? Can can uh, can we have just some uh, holy hyperbole? Uh, for a moment, I want us to imagine that we've transformed this room from a sanctuary in Jacksonville into a courtroom in D.C. I need, your, I need your help. I need, I need to borrow the wings of your imagination. Right now, we're going to court. God is on trial. The angels are the judges. The 24 elders are the jurors. God is the defendant. Nero is the prosecuting attorney. Ah, uh, God needed a defense attorney, wanted Johnny Cochran to be here, but he's with God. Uh, want, 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 wanted Willie Gary to be here, but he said, do I handle corporate law? So if y'all would just indulge me and give me some homiletical freedom, let me be God's defense attorney. Do I have your permission? Yes. But now I can't defend him if I don't have no evidence. And so when the angels call for the exhibits, I'm going to offer five exhibits. Are y'all with me? Yes. And when I offer these exhibits, I need you to stand for whatever exhibit you are under. I'm going to call for several exhibits, A through E, and when I call for the exhibit that fits your situation, I need you to stand and remain standing and say, I'm evidence. Are y'all with me? I I've got to get God. I've got to find God that God is guilty of being God. So now, court in session. Everybody be seated. God is on trial. Mr. Smith, do you have any evidence to prove that God is God? Yes, your honor, I went to Jacksonville and found some folk from Bethel Baptist Institutional Church in Jacksonville where pastors Rudy McKissick Sr. and Jr. serve as the ministers in charge. I bought five exhibits and they're going to testify as proof on behalf of God. Go ahead. Your honor, first of all, I got to exhibit A. Who are they, Smith? These are the folk who had ailments. They've been sick in their body and didn't think they were going to get well. Your Honor, these A exhibits, they are evidence that God is a healer. Let me see exhibit A. Just wave your hand and say, I'm exhibit A. Exhibit B, Your Honor. Exhibit B, these are the folk who've been broke in their life and didn't know how they were going to pay their bills. Exhibit I need to exhibit B. And, and exhibit C, Your Honor. These are the folk who felt like cussing somebody out of time. But you kept them in their right mind and kept them in perfect peace. Exhibit C, Your Honor. Exhibit D, Your Honor. These are the folk who've been delivered from bad relationships. Some of them been through a divorce. But you kept them and gave you somebody who was better than they had in the first place. Exhibit D, Your Honor. Exhibit E, Your Honor. The little folk who got woke up this morning and started on another day's journey. Let me see Exhibit E. Would you, would you, would you stand up? Now everybody who's standing, shake a neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm the evidence that can't nobody do you like Jesus? I'm 
evidence that the Lord will bring you out. Do I have a witness in here? Do I have anybody in here who's ever had to cry in the midnight hour? Say I'm the evidence. I gotta get back to Atlanta, but remember this. Some of y'all been crying in the midnight hour. Anybody know about midnight? Midnight is when you ain't got no money. Midnight is when you're down to your last time. Anybody been through midnight? Remember this, midnight only lasts for one minute. Midnight only lasts for 60 seconds. At midnight, that's midnight. But at 1201, that's morning time. Shake the neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm the evidence that we've been may endure for the night but child ah, child ah, child ah, child ch 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 ah, come in the morning do I have a witness look at a neighbor say neighbor I bet you I'm more evidence than you are. Say, neighbor, let's have an evidence test. Say, neighbor, the preacher is going to count the three. And whichever one of us can shout the most, that is the one who evidence the most. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to have a test. I bet you I'm more evidence than you are. On three, let's have an evidence test. One. Oh, shook. Some of y'all ain't ready. One. Two. Three. Being evidence, you're right on the verge of your miracle. Say, neighbor, all you need is a little push. Say, the preacher gonna count the three, and when he count the three, I'm gonna push you. And when I push you, walk into your evidence. One, two, one, two, three, push you. 